<clears throat> Welcome back to another episode of Fun Facts. So, anyone anyone a fan of Silence of the Lambs here? Because that's what we're going to be doing today. And also, we're going to be trying this hazelnut cocoa choco or hazelnut uh, arrow bar. Um, this is also found at the... Um, that that cool kiosk with all the different treats and stuff so who doesn't love a good treat with a good movie so that's why i am doing these is to try them let them know how they taste and, and you know whether i recommend them or not it doesn't matter uh or like where you could go try them and stuff like that it has nothing to do with mixing a good story with a good movie or a good snack with a good movie. So let's try this quickly. Ten out of ten recommend because you still get the original t taste of an arrow bar, but this is more of a like a hint of hazelnut, so it doesn't overpower the chocolate. Whereas I find with some of the other arrow bars, like the tiramisu, like those ones, they overpower the chocolate and then it makes it not as good so I do like that one that hazel that one is really good go try it um I'm sure it's easy to find let's get into some new let's get into some fun facts okay so let's get into some fun facts here the silence of the lambs is the third film to ever win all the big five oscars um uh, best picture actor actress director and screenplay the other two were It Happened One Night in 1935 and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest in 1976. Number two, Gene Siskel gave The Silence of the Lambs a thumbs down. Gene, Gene Siskel infamously didn't see what all the fuss was about dismissing the movie as a star-studded freak show and writing that The Silence of the Lambs was a case of much ado about nothing. The Oscars and Roger Ebert disagreed. Um, the rights to Hannibal Lecter were given away for free. Michael Mann's movie Manhunter 1986 was based on Thomas Harris's 1981 novel Dragon, the first of four books featuring the most infamous psychiatric or psych sorry, psychiatrist slash cannibal in the world, Manhunter barely made half of its budget back at the office, so producer Dino De Laurentiis gave away the rights he had for Lecter. The Silence of the Lambs producer's greatest Lecter's second movie ended up making $272.7 million, about $264 million more than this, his first. That's crazy. Um... I've heard about Hannibal Lecter or the show I believe I would love my boyfriend wants me to watch it so I hear it could be really bad but like I mean in a gory kind of like really bad kind of disturbing way but I wouldn't mind saying no to watching it like I would be interested um, I did like Silence of the Lambs it does have a good storyline from what I remember I swear like it was like a high school thing to watch or it was like a high school book or a high school movie to watch it was like an i thought it was like an educational one but definitely probably not because there's some pretty gory like or disturbing scenes like the guy in the jail cell who you know threw that thing on her like i'm not gonna say but if you know you know and that's the one thing that i remember the most because that grossed me out the most um <laughs> Number four, Gene Hackman was originally set to direct and star The Silence of the Lamb. Gene Hackman and Orion Pictures split the $500,000 needed to purchase the movie rights to the book. But Hackman dropped out days after he watched clips of himself at the 1989 Oscars 
as FBI agent Rupert Anderson in Allen Parker's Mississippi, Mississippi Burning, he decided he didn't want to follow up a dark role with an even more unlikable character. Number five, Michelle Pfeiffer was the first choice to play Clarice Starling in The Silence of the Lambs. Jodie Foster initially wanted to buy the film rights to Thomas's book herself, but Hackman beat her to it. She then settled for fighting for the role of the FBI agent Clarice Star- Starling director Jonathan Demi uh, wanted Pfeiffer, but like a lot of other actors, she was concerned about the darkness of the piece. Dem- Demi or Dem, sorry, didn't like Foster's Boston uh, accent in her movie, The Accused, even though it won her an Oscar, but after meeting the determined actress twice, he changed his mind. Oh, interesting. You know what's funny? I guess um, when things things happen for a reason, right? Like, like, obviously, Michelle Pfeiffer turned down the role. She was concerned about it. You may have wanted her for the role, but it's not always good a good idea or a good match and I do see that because it's like I couldn't imagine someone else playing that character other than Jodie Foster because you you know um because that that was given to her that was also we watched the show so many times or some people watch the movie so many times and they're a big fan of Silence of the Lambs or or even Friends like I couldn't see people be Lisa Kudrow because, or Phoebe because she fit the character best probably due to um, like her person her her acting skills and stuff and like it just it, and also I get why they're looking for a specific person however I think they did great with Jodie Foster because she kind of has that like toughness to her it seems with the, with her character. Number six, Jodie Foster was concerned that the Silence of, of the Lambs was going to make the FBI look dumb or stupid. I wonder why. Sorry, my legs are hurting right now. <laughs> you might see more of me. That's okay. Okay. Here we go. Now we're going back in. <laughs> okay. Dem directed the 19... Oh, why is there advertisements? Directed the 1980 comedy Married to the Mob starring Pfeiffer, which didn't portray the FBI in the smartest light. After the agency impressed Foster with their handling of a death threat against her, they had her they had earned her respect enough that she approached Dem before filming to make sure that the FBI would be portrayed in the correct way. Makes sense. But... In comedies, and I know Silence of the Lab is not a comedy, but in lots of other movies, don't they make FBI people look kind of dumb in like a comedy or whatever? I'm just curious. I don't know if that's true or not. Next one is Sean Connery was the first choice to play Hannibal Lecter in the Silence of the Lambs. I, it reminded me. Sean Connery, I've never heard of him up until I started watching those Saturday Night Lives with Will Ferrell and I know that's not the real Sean Connery but um watching the guy play Sean Connery all the time just kind of came to mind Connery read the script and found it revolting Daniel Day Lewis and Jarek Jacob he were also considered next one is Anthony Hopkins channeled an author actress and a computer in playing Hannibal Lecter in the Silence of the Lambs, they were Truman Capote, Catherine Hepburn, and Hall from 2001, A Space Odyssey, respectively. Tom Harris did not base Hannibal Lecter on any one person. He was a general composite of all the evil that Thomas Harris saw while doing research. There's no one, no one, thank goodness, like him, said FBI profiler John Douglas, the inspiration for Jack Crawford. Um, Scott Glenn broke down while researching his role as Jack Crawford for The Silence of the Lambs. Douglas gave Glenn a tour of the FBI's Behavioral Science Unit in Quantico, Virginia, after hearing tapes of serial killers Lawrence Bittaker and Roy Norris raping and, oh, raping and torturing a young girl. Uh, Glenn walked out in tears and was suddenly in the favor of the death penalty. 
Okay. Douglas gave Glenn a tour of the funeral. I don't know if I, I don't want to repeat that one. Okay. Most of the silence of the lamps was shot around Pittsburgh. The outside of the Baltimore State Hospital for the Criminally Insane is in fact... Oh. The exterior of the Western Center Hospital in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. Western Center closed in 2000 but was safe from demolition after it was designed as a historical landmark. Okay. Cool. What do you guys think of these so far? Um, are, you, are you a fan of this movie? Was it one of your favorite movies? Or was it one of your least favorite movies? Was it too scary for you? Um, just out of curiosity, because because some people I think maybe did find it a little creepy, a little too creepy for them. So I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. And you can comment that below. And we have time for two more. The film equaled a, a famous record. Oh, we read that one. The Poster isn't quite what it seems. The poster isn't quite what it seems. Almost night as iconic as the characters, the poster is one of the great movies one sheets to come out of the nineties in two thousand six. So it was named the best poster poster of the last thirty five years by the Key Art Awards. There is what looks like a skull on the moth in the poster, and it this was inspired by Salvador Dali's Involuptus. Morris, which was a picture of se seven naked women entwined to create the illusion of a human skull. If you look more closely, you'll see it isn't a skull. Oh, no, it's not. It's That's neat. It's kind of creepy, too. Straight to video. The Silence of the Lambs was at once time considered for a direct-to-video release because studio executives felt that the subject matter was too distasteful for a mass audience. What is that? Uh, it's straight to video kind of thing. Direct to video. What is a direct to video? Direct to video or straight for, to video release of, of a film, television series, short, special to the public immediately on home video formats rather than theatrical. Okay, direct video releases can be done for films which cannot be shown theatrically due to control. Okay, so they can't be in theaters. Oh gosh, I froze. <laughs> but they can definitely be on, like, say, Netflix. But I mean, it would be like a VHS at the time, being in the 90s. But that is it, you guys, um, for... for oh, what happened there? That is it for the facts there um for silence of the lambs i hope you guys enjoyed it go check out go eat that arrow bar it's tasty and go check out those sites which i'll have down below um, also go check out my patreon which is uploaded every sunday spotify one will be uploaded thursday and sunday all about travel moments patreon's animal and travel and then our um dog channel so go check those out. You have an awesome rest of your day. Chat soon. Bye now.